You're watching the Spirit Food Christian Center Worldwide Webcast, broadcasting live every Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Yes, amen, hallelujah. When Spirit Food comes to you, blessings will flow. Say yes. The message is called Keep That Same Energy. All right? So everybody say, keep that same energy. Keep that same energy. We got a lot of energy. We got the Holy Spirit energy right now. All right, man, it just brought us in. So we got to keep that same energy. Um, I want to talk about something real quick. I had a, uh, I was watching a reality show, right? And on the reality show, it was his father and his son. And they were having issues within their family. And they were having real, real bad issues. And they were going, we need to have a conversation. We need to talk to one another, right? And we need to see eye to eye, okay? So let's have this conversation. And they on the phone, they're like, yo, let's meet up, let's talk, let's see eye to eye. And it was funny, you ever seen somebody have a conversation, two people, and then they don't look at each other the whole entire time they having the conversation? And it was crazy, they met up, all right? The son's right here, he's right here, and they're looking at each other, but then, as soon as the issues started to come up and they were talking about the issues that they had within their family, they started to look away like this. And they both looking at the wall in the entire conversation, they looking at the wall and not looking at each other in the eye, right? And it was weird, and what was crazy was that the cameraman caught their eyes, right? And in their eyes was a lot of hurt. In their eyes was a lot of pain. And if they would have just looked at one another, they would have saw Oh, I see the pain, I see the love. And they would know that they just needed to talk face to face, eye to eye, and really look at one another and see themselves. But they didn't do it. Now, a lot of times that happens because out of emotion, you know what I mean? You might feel some type of emotion when somebody's looking at you, right? Or you might feel like, I'm embarrassed if they're staring at you. So you avert your gaze, right? You avert your gaze from looking at them. Or it could be all the visual input that you're getting, because the eyes hold a lot of information, right? So you're getting that visual input, and you just need time to focus, because they might have asked you a hardcore question. So it's like, let me look away. I need, to, I need to focus on that a little bit. I need to focus before I answer. So you need to organize your thoughts. And that sometimes can be hard when you're trying to organize your thoughts. It can be really, really hard, right? Because you don't know what they're thinking when they're looking at you. And you know, it could be, you might not want to have this conversation right now, right? You know, you see that person that comes up to you and you don't want to have a conversation with them, so you avert the gaze, you stop looking at them. That's happened to me before. I don't know about y'all. But you know, a brother come up, you're like, oh man, here he come, right? And they come up and they start talking about something that you're not really interested in. You know, like, hey man, cigarettes, Sagittarius, that mixed together, don't that sound right? And it's like, I don't, what, that doesn't make any sense. Right? And so you start looking, you averting your gaze. You're like, okay, all right. And you're looking for somebody that you might know that you want to look at so you can walk off. But what if you're the other person, right? Okay? And somebody's talking to you, right? And you start to notice they're not paying attention to what you're saying, right? And they start averting the gaze. You start feeling like, well, maybe I'm not that important. You know, maybe they don't want to listen to me. Maybe they want to hear what I have to say. Then you start to get into your feelings and that's happened before, you know, in relationships and conversation. You know, you're talking to somebody and they're averting the gaze, they're looking away. You start to go, well, you know what? I'm done talking. And then that person wakes up all of a sudden. Wait, 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 what's going on? Why are you leaving the room? Well, it feels like you're not paying attention to me. Feels like you're not looking at me. You're averting the gaze, the gaze. Make sure you have that eye contact with someone that eye contact, because the eye can give a lot of cues, okay? Like maybe you lied, okay? Maybe you told something that wasn't true, so when somebody's looking at you and they ask you a serious question, you look down like this. You avert the gaze, you're looking away, looking away like that, all right? Averting the gaze, averting the gaze. That's what we're talking about right now. And we're talking about keeping that same energy, keeping that same energy. But what about when you're locking eyes, right? when you're locking eyes with someone. You ever been in a situation where somebody's real emotional and they're talking about something emotional that's happening in their life, right? And it's hurting them, but they won't look at you, right? They're just going, man, I'm hurting. 
I can't believe this happened to me, man. Every time I go somewhere, this keeps happening to me, man. I can't believe it. And they're just walking back and forth. And you right there, and they just walking away. But you're listening with a loving eye. A loving eye. You're watching, and you're looking, and you know that person just lock eyes with you. That they'll see that you have that love and that you care. And they'll hug you, right? And you just know that. But they still going, man, dude, I don't know why this is happening to me. Why does this happen to me, man? Every time, every time. And maybe you that person that's going back and forth like, ah, why is this happening? The person got them loving eyes. And then what you do is you turn around and you look at them. And that loving eye, you start crying immediately. You start crying. You You understand, right? Because you see that they understand. They didn't even have to say anything. It's all in their eyes, right? All in their eyes and their spirit. They're looking, looking at you, loving you, right? That's it. Locking of the eyes. But let's talk about a relationship. You know, wife and a husband. You know, anybody here married? All the married couples? Hey, make some noise. Okay, well, I'm married. Now, the locking of the eye, I want you to remember, like, when you met your significant other, right? It feels like you said, yeah. <laughs> it feels like everything just stopped. I mean, that's what it felt like for me. I don't know about y'all. But it felt like everybody else around me started to silence. And it got black and white with everybody else. And all I saw was Asia, right? And so that eye locked, right? And I didn't avert the gaze. I was looking like, who is that? She's beautiful. Who is that? Oh, my goodness, right? And you start to get closer and closer and closer. And you go out on dates and you talk and stuff like that but you don't avert the gaze in those conversations and the conversations that you have. You know, you have those. But then there's also, you know, when you get married, right? When you get married, they have you stand right in front of each other, right? Have you stand in front of each other, okay? And then when you say the I do's, right? You don't go like this, I do. I love this woman. I will. Nah, you don't do that. You don't invert the gaze. You don't look down. You look straight in the eye. Right? You look him in the eye. And I don't know about y'all, but I started crying. My wedding, I started crying. The reason I started crying, because I saw my future in my wife's eyes. I saw us being one in my wife's eyes. And that energy that we had when we first started, when I saw her the first time, was growing over time. Growing, growing. Now we're at the wedding and it's strong and it's going to continue to grow. But that is why we're looking at each other and I'm not averting the gaze. I'm saying I'm with you through all of this. Trials, tribulations, we rocking together. I will never switch up my energy. I keep that same energy. Keep that same energy, okay? Keep it. So no matter what, trials and tribulations, you see, knows that I got it. My wife know I got her, and I'm going to be with her because we're a team. Now, let's talk about when certain things fall apart in certain, like, relationships. And one thing you notice is that it's in the eyes. It's in the eyes, okay? Now, check this out. I want y'all to hear something real quick, okay? So you see a couple, right, and they're having an argument. They're having an argument. Something going on, and she might have heard something, he might have heard something. And one of them asks them, Like, I got to talk to this person. I got to talk to this person. And they go and say, look me in my eyes and tell me you love me. Now, y'all know y'all have heard people say that. Why are you saying, look me in my eyes and tell me you love me? Because they want to see if you really keeping it 100, you really keeping it real. Because, see, when you have your eyes locked on someone, when you start to think as you're looking, you're getting information from them, but then you're trying to think of information, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to say. So then you have to avert to focus. Like, I got to think about something, right? So now they know immediately, ah, something didn't change. The focus is not the same. The energy is off. What is, what is happening? What's happening with our relationship? What happened? Why are you averting the gaze? You're not keeping that same energy. Now, sometimes it could be, you know, a friendship. And this is your homie, right? And you tell your homie, hey, let's meet up. Let's have a conversation. Let's talk, right? So y'all meet up, meet up, right? Meet up at a, a lunch spot. And they're right behind you or right in front of you, right? And they're sitting there. And you're having a conversation. 
and the whole entire time they're getting on their phone, right? They're not listening to what you're saying. Whole entire time they're looking away, they're looking up in the sky, mm, don't feel like you're important no more, right? So they're just looking away, averting the gaze. You're like, man, why are they doing this to me? Why are they doing this? And then you say, okay, well, I guess we're going to wrap it up. And they grab their stuff quick. All right, man, I'll see you later. Right? They're gone. They moved off fast. So, right, the energy changed. And what if it's a family member that you haven't talked to in a while? Right? It's a family member you haven't talked to. But this is your peoples. You grew up together, right? And you see them at the mall, and you're like, yes, I see them at the mall. And you say, yo, what's up, Mark? And Mark looks at you and then avert the gaze. He look away and he keep it pushing. He's walking away, he's walking away, right? And you're like, I know Mark saw me, right? Like, I know he saw me. Why did he look away at that moment? Why did he look away? He switched it up. He switched the energy. He switched it up, he switched it, right? Okay, so now y'all probably like, why is Kale talking about relationships? Why is he talking about eyes? What is going on? Why is he talking about that? Okay, let's talk about it this way. As Christians, we all have a relationship with Christ, right? Have a relationship with Christ, okay? I want you to turn to Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And we're talking about keeping that same energy. Keeping that same energy, all right? Now it says... I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Mm. Now, I want to read that in the Amplified Version, okay? I want you to look at the Amplified for a second. I have been crucified with Christ. That is in him, I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith. By adhering to, relying on, and completely trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Okay, now, everyone say adhering. Adhering to. Relying on. And completely trusting. If I'm adhering, relying on, completely trusting, ah, that sounds like a relationship, right? Sounds like a relationship. I know this person, because I'm adhering, relying, and completely trusting on Christ. Christ. That's what you're doing. So now, like I said earlier, when you're now having a conversation, he lives in you. He lives in me. So if someone lives with you, they going where you're going, right? And they're in your house. So you can't avert the gaze because when you avert the gaze, they'll know it. They'll know it immediately. God knows when you're averting the gaze, all right? He knows. He lives in us. Keep that same energy. Keep that Holy Spirit energy that you have with Jesus. Keep that same energy. Don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Your prayer life becomes your conversation with Christ. That's your prayer life. So when I was talking about having that conversation and looking at Christ, that conversation is the prayer life. You getting up in the morning, you praying, spending time with Jesus. Spend the time with them, you know? That's the conversation. The Bible, the Word of God, that's the dialogue. The dialogue that you're having with him. And you do not avert the gaze. Everybody say, do not avert the gaze. And you do not avert the gaze of your heart. Uh-oh. It's a little different now. We were talking about eyes. Kale, what was happening? We were talking about eyes, man. No, actually, we've been the whole entire time talking about your heart. Talking about your heart. That's what we've been talking about the whole entire time. Because your heart has eyes. Your heart has eyes. All right? You have to know that. And how do I know that? Hey, I I didn't make it up. Turn to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. Ephesians chapter 1, 
verse 18. <clears throat> Y'all got it up there? I can't. <laughs> and it says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. His holy people is right there in the word, y'all. It has a heart. Your eyes have, your, it's your eyes on your heart. Eyes on your heart. Now, in the Amplified, it says, and I pray that the eyes of your heart, the very center and core of your being, may be enlightened, flooded with the light by the Holy Spirit, flooded with the light of the Holy Spirit, so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectation mm, to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in God's people. So now he's talking about that energy as well. As you're seeing him, you got to lead with your heart. Lead with your heart while you're having that conversation with Jesus. It's all through the love. It's all through the love. And so we're saying that energy is the Holy Spirit is giving you light. So say, keep that same energy. Keep that same energy, all right? Don't you stop. Don't you turn away your heart. Don't you get your heart cold. Jesus is with you. He's living in you, okay? He wakes you up like, let's do this. If he lives with me, he's, he wakes up with me then, right? When I go to bed, he's going to bed. He's there, but he's up while I'm asleep because he's fighting for me. He's fighting for me. He's in my house. He's around me all the time, okay? He's saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. You wake up and you be like, man, what happened yesterday? God going, don't worry about that. You know, I'm going to fight it for you. I'm going to fight your demons for you. You okay. Let's get up. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get these blessings. Come on. Let's go. He wakes you up and he says, you got to have faith to keep going. Faith to believe in me because I am with you. I'm with you. All right? You know what's funny is people can't see God, okay, because they turn away from his presence. People can't see God because they turn away from his presence, okay? So he's with you, right? All the time. He's with you all the time. So imagine it like God is with you in your house. And the reason you can't see him is because you decide to turn away. You can't turn away from something that's inside of you. He's inside of you, but you choose to ignore him, right? And as Christians, we can't ignore him. So if someone is in our house and they're being beautiful and they're being nice and they're saying, hey, I made you breakfast and I got you, I prayed for you already, you just walk over their legs. And you walking over. You know, he meets you right before you go to the bathroom. Hey, 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 let's pray. Let's pray, man, let's do something. You just close the door, bow. A horrible roommate you are. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we're not that. We're not that. Okay, we know Christ lives in us, right? Say, Christ lives in me. Yes, and you will pay attention, pay attention to the things that he's saying because he lives in us. It's all in the word, right? And it's his presence. Turn to uh, 1 Chronicles uh, chapter 16, verse 11. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11. <clears throat> it says, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually, 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 continually. His presence, you want him around you all the time, all the time. You know, I was talking to a, a, a brother last week, and he was saying, uh, we were getting together for like a fellowship, and he was saying that when I'm in here, my heart is just filled up. When I'm in here, I feel amazing. But then when I go outside and I go back to my hood, all this crazy stuff starts happening, and I got this rage, and I want to fight, right? That's what he was saying. And I was like, do you know everything we did in here? It's still with you. It's inside of you. Okay, so you have to speak it wherever you go. Speak that anointing. Speak it. Speak that love of God. He's with you. Just because you walked out of the church, Jesus didn't just say, all right, man, I'll see you next Sunday. No, he walking with you. He opening the door like, come on, let's get in this car, man. I'm riding with you. Hey, watch out for that. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. He's with you. All right? You got to keep that same energy. Everybody say, keep that same energy. Keep that same energy. Turn to Exodus chapter 33, 
verse 14. Keep that same energy. <clears throat> it says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. That's what I just said right there. So why are you worrying? Why are you worrying? There's no need to worry because his presence is with you. He's following you everywhere you go, so there's need to, no need to worry. So whatever you're going through, whatever it might be, I don't know what you're going through, but know that God can get you through it and that you will make it because he's with you. But you, you have to seek him, okay? You have to seek him. You can't turn away, okay? You can't look down, okay? Even when it gets hard, don't look away, all right? Be with him at all times. Because I know when, I, when Jesus says, hey, yo, kill! And he called him my name, yo, kill! I'm not going to go, oh, oh, yeah. No, I'm like, Jesus, what's up? Yeah. This is my boy. He's your homie. This is your boy. This is, he's there for you. He loves you. All right? Keep that same energy. Okay? You know what I mean? You're not going to walk away from Jesus as Christians. Right? Don't do that. Don't do that. Keep that same energy. You know, it's, 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 it's funny. You know, like Peter did that, you know, right before the crucifixion, right there. You know, people were saying, you know, like, hey, wait a minute. I know him. He ride, he, he be chilling with Jesus. He, he always with Jesus. I know him. He was like, no, nah, man, I don't know him. Because it was getting hard. It's getting deep. They about to, you know, put people on the cross. They about to kill people. And he was just like, nah, man, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know him. Did it three times. You know, the third time is deep. It's what I, that example I gave at the mall to show family member, and they turned away. Jesus looked at him right after he said it. Did you imagine that? It's crazy. Don't, 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 don't avert the gaze. Stay with him. Keep that same energy. We rocking together. All right? Don't switch up. Don't switch up. You know, me and Asia, uh, we have a funny thing where we talk about in the hood. Anybody all grew up in the hood? Well, I grew up in the hood. Okay, let's go. Okay, I grew up on the south side of Chicago, right? And, uh, you know, I grew up in the hood, Asia grew up in the hood, and so, uh, in L.A. And it's crazy, right, that we always say there's always a kung fu man in the hood, right? Always somebody that's seen too many Bruce Lee movies, right? <laughs> and they be fighting. There's always a kung fu dude in the hood, right? You know what I'm saying? So on Monday, he hit it. Right? He hitting it, right? When you at the bus stop, he doing push-ups. Huh, huh, huh. He hitting it, right? He always practicing the art, okay? Always practicing the art. He's never going to switch up, right? So when you see him and he walks in somewhere, right? So let's say that brother walk into a room, he don't got to say nothing. His energy introduce him. So he come in like this. <laughs> he ain't got to say nothing. <laughs> It's already been introduced. You be like, oh, no, that brother know the food. You don't even say kung fu. He know the food. You already know. It introduces you, right? Like Mike Tyson, okay? Mike Tyson, right? Mike Tyson, the look that he gives right before he's about to fight. I've heard him say that he likes to punch through people. So that's what he's focused on from the start. Now, you might say, well, yeah, of course we're going to know Mike Tyson's energy because we've seen Mike Tyson fight. But did you see Mike Tyson's first fight? I did. His professional fight, I wasn't there physically, but I watched it on YouTube. There's a whole story about it, right? Where that, when he was a kid, Muhammad Ali came to speak to him, right? Came to speak to him and a couple of other kids, right? And Ali had lost the fight at that point, right? But he came to speak to him, and he loved Ali, man. He was like, man, that's awesome. So in his mind as a little kid, he was going, I'm about to get the dude to knock you out. I want to get him. That's what I'm going to do. So he trained every day. He was focused. He was focused, right? Focused, right? Keeping that gaze. He was focused. So when he walked in on that first fight to fight dude, he walked in like this. Focused, right? The other dude was like, oh, I already won. It's cool. <laughs> right? And he came in and he's just looking at him, right? He's looking at him. And I mean, the fight only lasted for a little bit. He was like, pop, pop. And he hit him so hard, dude forgot where he was. It was like he was taking orders. Oh, you wanted the chicken sandwich? That's what you <laughs> wanted the chicken sandwich? That's what Gone, right? <laughs> Gone. But he was so focused. That's how we need to be focused. 
know what I mean? Jesus is saying, you already got the victory, so you focus. You won already. Amen. Come on. Yeah, you won already. Champions. Champions. And when I say the energy introduces you before you come in the room, I don't want to sound like, because you know some people, he's talking about energy. I'm talking about the spirit of God. Okay? Because I know that meeting go have miss, but hey, Cam, all that energy talk, it's the spirit of God. Okay? I love you. It's the spirit of God. Okay? It's the Holy Spirit is what I'm talking about. So your anointing introduces you when you walk in the room. That is what happens. Okay? So when I walk into the room, that's a man of God. I know that's a man of God. I don't have to say anything. They're going to know because of the way I move, the way I look. Make sure that you're doing that because you're not averting your gaze from the eyes of your heart with God's heart. Okay? This is what we're talking about. Now, speaking of athletes, okay, and uh, we're talking about fighters, there's something called a quiet eye. I know we got a lot of sports people in here, but I don't know if you know about the quiet eye. Okay? A quiet eye. So I'm going to read an article real quick so you know what the quiet eye is that athletes use. All right? It says, I'm going to quiet eye, a kind of enhanced visual perception, all right, that allows the athlete to eliminate any distraction as they plan their next move. Intriguingly, quiet eye appears to be particularly important at times of stress, preventing the athlete from choking at moments of high pressure. The exact location of the gaze depends on the task in question during the free throw. In basketball, for instance, the gaze needs to land on the front of the hoop's rim. For a football penalty kick, it should be on the top left or right corner of the net. And for an ice hockey goalkeeper, they gaze lingers on the puck just before the opponent released it from the stick. In each case, a steadier final fixation just before the critical moment marks out the expert athlete who holds their gaze for 62% longer than the novices. The quiet eye duration correlates with self-reported feelings of flow or being in the zone, okay? The sensation of effortless concentration in which your mind is clear of everything except the task at hand. The quiet eye also seems to coincide to other psychological changes throughout the body. The heart rate temporarily decelerates. For instance, in the movement of the limbs themselves become smoother. All of this might seem to support the idea that the quiet eye filters distractions and calms the mind and the body at the critical moment, even under stress. Now, Serena Williams was quoted saying, I've won most of my matches, probably all of my grand slams, because what's upstairs, not anything else. A large part of that may be kind of calm focus that comes from the quiet eye. If you're behind in a game, it's so important to relax, and that's what I do. When I'm behind in a game, that's when I become most relaxed, she added. Just focus on one point at a time, just that soul point, and then the next one, and then the next one. That sounds a lot like the Holy Spirit, right? So when there's stress and there's tribulation and there's things in your life that seem like you're not going to get through it, you need to be calm. You need to be calm and focus on Jesus and go to him so that he can get you through it and give you that quietness, that quietness, all right? So when she was talking about upstairs, we're talking about the heart that can control the upstairs, okay? All right? Let Jesus take over your mind because he knows what's about to happen. That quiet eye, right? So when I was, I was one time, me and Asia, we were going to like an RV event, right? Um, and with my uh, mother-in-law. And so we went up there, right? And we drove out far, like, I don't know, three hours, right? And so GPS, how many of y'all got GPS? Y'all got ways, okay, y'all pray for me because me and GPS be going back and forth. I want to do it better than GPS. I bet I can get there before GPS tell me. So, <laughs> so. So, and then I got a new car, right? And so the GPS on the car, when we plug it into my phone, it started getting loud. So Wisdom's music would play like, la da 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 we'd play. She in the back going, and then all of a sudden, Waze would come up and say, turn left, and it's real loud. And to the point where Wisdom started going, turn left, turn right. And so she was trying to take a nap, and Angel was like, we need to turn this thing down. And so it was a new car, so I couldn't figure it out yet, right? So we're going up there, and I'm like, I'm going to figure it out later. But what I'll do is I'll turn off the alerts. 
So I'll just turn off the alerts and then I'll look at the screen and follow the screen because on the screen it'll tell you move right, move left, so I'll be okay. So we get in the car and <laughs> it's saying move right, move left and all that stuff, right? And I get into a conversation with my wife, right? And the conversation gets really, really deep. <laughs> All the men know exactly what I'm talking about. So we get real deep, right? So we have a good conversation and we jamming. And then I happen to look over at the screen in the car and I'd have missed like three exits, right? So I don't say nothing. I just keep going, oh, it's cool. I just, you know, I'll be all right. I'll make a left and we'll be back on it. So then all of a sudden my wife looks at the screen and she goes, well, wait, wait a minute. We didn't miss a few. Why did more time get added on to the GPS? What's going on? And so I was like, oh, well, I turned the alerts off. And I, and I turned the alerts off because, you know, it was, you know, waking wisdom up and stuff like that. So, I, you know, I turned the alerts off. And she was like, come on, boy, just turn the alerts back on and we just get on home. I said, okay, cool. So, we turned the alerts on, but what my wife did, she do this look, right, when she knows she was right, she was going like this. <laughs> so, she crossed her arms and do this. And when I know I to do that, I'm like, oh, I messed up, right? I messed up. She looking at me like, mm-hmm, you should listen to me, right? And... I want to respond at that moment, right? I want to be like, well, no, baby, because it was like this, and I just wanted to, you know what I'm saying? I want to respond. But then, here's the cool thing about conversation with Jesus. It doesn't have to happen where it's like, I got to have like a moment, and the birds got to be flying at the exact same time, and the sun and all this. It can happen at any moment, because remember what I said, he's in you, in you. So the Lord said, quiet your mind, Kel. Be quiet. She's right. Okay? And so I said, baby, you, you was right. Right? And then I get quiet and we're focusing. Right? We're focusing. I'm focusing on the GPS. And then all of a sudden, GPS did mess up because there was a car in front of us that started weaving. Right? And I didn't understand why the car was weaving. So we're looking at the car weaving. Another car go over that way. Another car go that way. And so all of a sudden, we look back to the road and there is a big, like, hay. Bell of hay tied up, two or three of them fell off a truck that's right in the middle of the road, okay? Now, what I was doing at that point, I was focused on Jesus because Jesus said, Kel, be quiet, pay attention to the road. GPS didn't say nothing, but Jesus knew what was happening. Yeah. So when I saw it, immediately it felt like, man, like Serena Williams with that quiet eye. It was like the Lord said, move this way, drive this way, get out of the way of that car, weave around like that, and before I know it, we was at the exit, we were good. It was crazy, but Jesus can get you out of anything. Anything, situations like that, because that situation might sound like, well, Kill, that's not, that's not my problem, I go through crazier things. But that could have been a really, really bad problem if I ran into that. I had my daughter in the car, okay? So it's times when God is saying, listen to me, talk to me, he's nudging you, keep that same energy, no matter what's going on. Get out of the way of yourself. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Possibilities change when you change your perspective. You change your perspective. It's just like, okay, it's just like when Peter was on the water. You know, all the water was going crazy with the wave, and he came out because he wanted to walk like Jesus. Jesus said, come on now. And he's out there, and he's walking, right? And it's all the water is going crazy, right? And he's got his eyes on Jesus so he can do it. But all of a sudden, as soon as he took it off, he started drowning. He started to drown. Okay? You got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Even when it's like the waves are going. You're going, yes, yeah, waves going, it's crashing, but you know, it's like still waters. I can just walk on it. It's all good. It's like still waters. I'm good. I'm moonwalking on the water. I'm good. And then you can't look at the value of men at that point. Okay, you can't look at men to say, ooh, you can't get all in yourself when you walked on water. And then you look at everybody like, ha, ha, hey, you saw me walk on water? Because you know what a hater going to say? Uh, you just didn't walk on water because you don't know how to swim. That's why you walked on water, because you don't know how to swim. That's what happened. They'll come up with something. And then you defeat it again. Look for God. The appreciation. God loves you. God is saying, hey. We got this. Keep that same energy. Keep it. Keep it. All right, so we're talking about being a champion and having the victory. The victory. And I was talking about being still. You know, the still waters. It's another word with still. We're still, like you're strong on a rock. Still. Strong. Right? Being still 
in the moment when something is going on, being still and trusting the Lord. Everybody say, trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Okay, so how many of y'all ever seen a championship boxing match? Okay, championship boxing match. Okay, so you see a championship boxing match, and one thing that they always say with the end still, the end still, right? So think about that for a second. It's the champion, he's up there, and he's just finished the fight. There's all these punches. Then there's another person right there that wants the belt. But this is the champion, okay? And when they get up there, they're breathing hard. <sighs> and the one thing they want to hear the announcer say is two words, right? And before the two words are finished with the entire sentence, what is it that they say? Do y'all know? Y'all know? Okay. Huh? There you go. They say, in still. And before they say, in still, the heavyweight champion of the world, everybody went crazy already. Because they know the champion still won. In still. In still. In still. So if you're a champion, I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. Amen. Mm. Okay, now when it's up on the screen, I want you to say it out loud. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. Okay? Is it up there? Okay, let me check it out, man. Yeah, it's up there. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so everybody say it with me. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone say victory. 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 Okay, so if you're champions, right, when you wake up in the morning, the battle's already won. The victory's already won. So demons are fleeing, all right? Whatever problem you have is won already because you got the victory through Jesus Christ. Okay, so if you're a champion, what does a champion do when it says instill? He's putting his hands up, right? So that means you're praising God. You're praising God because he got you through the battle already. So what I want y'all to do, I want you to stand up. If you can't stand up, just go like this. If you can't stand up, but I want you to put your hands up, okay? Put your hands up because if we champions, we champions. See, we get, this is spiritual warfare. We fighting for our families. We're fighting for our kids. And Jesus is doing it for us, all right? So we're trusting in him. So we raise our hands up because the battle's already won, right? So now, angels, heaven, they're screaming. They're saying, in still, okay? So I want you to repeat after me because the championship's already won. The whole crowd going crazy for you. All of heaven is screaming for you. So when I say in still, repeat after me. In still. In still. Because I am righteous. Because I am righteous. I am saved. In still, the joy of the Lord is my strength. In still, with God, I have the victory. In still, I trust in the Lord. In still, when I cry for help, the Lord hears me. In still, I do not worry. God gives me, gives me peace. peace. And still, still, my God, my God makes, my makes my enemies stumble, stumble and, fall and fall at my feet. At my feet. And, still, and still, God, God is, with is with me wherever I go. Wherever I go. And, still, and still, I have, I have the, spirit the Spirit of God's, of God's Holy, Ghost Holy Ghost power. And still, still, because of his glorious might, might, I am strengthened strengthened with all power, power. endurance, endurance, and divine divine energy. energy. And still, still, I keep keep that same same energy. energy. And still, still, God God gets gets the glory glory of all, all, of all, of all things. And still, still, I give him, him, now this big right here, and still, still, I give him, him. we're going to do it again, I want you to jog a little bit, and still, still, I give him him 
the highest praise. Then do it then. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give him the highest praise. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I give you the highest praise. I give you the highest praise. Highest praise. But say, I give you the highest praise. Give you the highest praise. God gets all the glory. God gets all the glory. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for tuning in today's lesson. If you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then I'm going to lead you into a confession of faith. If you say these words after me, you can become a child of the living God. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Let us pray these words now, believing these words in our heart and saying them with our mouth. Dear God, I believe in my heart you sent your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. He was crucified. His blood was shed to wash me clean. And dear God, you raised him from the dead. So I confess with my mouth, now Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. You are alive. I believe this in my heart. And because I confess you as my Lord, I am now a child of the living God. Father, thank you for making me your very own. I will live for you. you are in Jesus' name, amen. That never goes I'd like to thank you for your continual support of this broadcast of Spirit Food Christian Center. We're so grateful for your participation. I'd like to give you an opportunity to participate by our Push Pay app. Text my SFCC to the number 77977. You'll receive further instruction on how to give. We're so grateful and thankful for your continual support and love. Remember, you're helping to make it happen. In Jesus' name, you amen. Are the sun.